Well, it's seven o'clock by my clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order. First thing is the Pledge of Allegiance. I remain standing for a moment of silence. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everybody. Okay, first thing is the approval of the agenda, additions, corrections to the agenda. I have two uh, under new business. I believe my son Jason would be here from a proposal from the Red Iron. And uh, don't we used to have a Old business one, or did we eliminate that and just put it under it's un unfinished business? Put it on unfinished. Unfinished is old. Okay. And it doesn't have anything under the chickens. We tabled it last time. Yeah. To ask Tom about proposal of the straw yeah, manure. Under unfinished. So put that chickens underneath unfinished business. And I guess uh, Jason would be under new business. That's the only two I had. Anybody else got any additions, corrections? If not, let me make a motion to approve the minutes. Agenda. Pardon? Agenda. Or agenda. Make a motion to approve. Come in second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, approval of the minutes from, uh, we have two meetings there. Regular one and uh, February 2nd and, uh, or the regular one at February 13th and the special one on uh, February 2nd. Additions, corrections for those. One basically on the uh, 2nd of February was have to do with the school and Mr. Drummer. Anybody with changes? If not, somebody make a motion to approve the minutes. Make the motion to approve. Come on the second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, approval of the bills. Text 17663 through 17683. <clears throat> Any questions on those? The consolidated communications bill, is that paid quarterly? Or monthly. It is monthly? Okay. I have a couple there. I guess last month we were asking that uh, the inner, the electricity and the gas be divided up between the, the buildings it goes to. Mm -hmm. I see the gas got done, but uh, the utilities, we wrote a check out on the 3rd and the 6th to Excel for $15.80. And then on the following day, we wrote one out for $777.63. You mean this, they sent two bills? We get like four bills. So if you look on page three, 77763 is for street lighting. 1580 is the 530 Sherman Street house. Okay, like the city shop and all that then? Uh, hasn't, hasn't came yet. Otherwise, it would be broken down the same way. So it would be... In the, the comments, they'd be all under those lines, but they come at different times because they're due at different times. Okay. All right. Any other, anybody else with questions? If not, somebody make a motion to approve the bills. So moved. I'm second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Sheriff's Department had 61 hours of service, hit and run, fire department assist, ambulance assist, multiple. Questions on that? Not uh, move on to fire department. Chief Clammer has five calls, one lift assist, three medicals, one mutual aid fire, South Bend. Questions on that? My gosh, this is record time here. Street update, Race Johnson. Uh, Todd Bartles with uh, Pearson Road for seal coating. You reached out. Um, I guess you had to do that last year. But, uh, 
could get it or something that happened that I couldn't be done. And like he said, um, he sent me a big total of ninety one thousand nine dollars this year. I think last year was eighty eight thousand. Well, I told him that I'd let him them all and let him know what you guys say. Once the cross goes out, I'll, we won't be able to look at the streets as far as patching, and we won't know exactly when that will get done. I mean, that was the problem last year. That got patching got done too late. No quoting done, but uh, that could be the end of April, May, May. This but, basically has every street on it, too, right? Yeah. And black top. So who does the street patching? Did Race do that himself? Oh, yeah. Hire a contractor to come in. Okay. WW did it last year. And who all built bid in on it? So it's been four years, I believe, hasn't it? I'm not sure as far as seal coding. Uh, I believe it's 2016. Or no, that was for the water tower. I can't. He said when his email he said it was a um I think five years. Well, we were on an every three year program. I know we were doing three years, but I know we missed here. Maybe we missed because of the county project out here that one summer, which didn't interfere with us, but it did with all the other traffic. Um, on that map, it says 2014. Can't be that old. No, it can't be that old. We've had it done before since then because we got that big red rock pile down there at the lagoon. So <clears throat> I'd say it's been done in the last five years, but do we want to uh, go ahead and lock this in at this price now? And uh, and we have to have more than one quote. Suppose we would have, wouldn't we? Yep. But haven't we found out it's hard lately that uh, to find somebody? Well. Does WW seal coat you yeah. remember? They do? I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess 20, we'll have to. 2019 is when we did it last. Yeah. We'll have to have another quote being this kind of money. So I guess reach out to WW, whoever else would seal coat. Get a couple. Call that uh, main guy in the office down there anyway. So okay. All right. And then so. Um, any street repair, we need to do that before we do right. the coding, yep. right? Yeah. So do we want to, it's probably too hard to get an estimate on that. Like I said, the cross has got to go out yet. I know where all the cracking is on the streets that need patching or anything. So yeah, we got to wait till at least the cross goes out. So okay. it could be the end of April. Okay. Yep. Okay. Patching would have to have probably two too, depending on how that we'd have to have two for the patching then too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we'd we'll probably spend thirty-five twenty-five to forty-five thousand dollars on patching because we got some areas that need some help. Yeah. So we'd have a hundred and thirty-five fifty thousand dollar bill between the two here. Uh that brings another question the street over there going south. Do we have any plans for that this summer? We got to do something. <laughs> Would we, at the same time they're in patching, put a overlay on it? What street? North Halliday. South Halliday. South Halliday. Mm -hmm. South Halliday. Okay. I was coming from the other way. <laughs> <laughs> that nap thing that I was talking about. So, I mean, now's the time to get going on this. Yeah. It'll be spring. People will get busy. So do we do an overlay? Want to do anything with the water main under there? Do we want to do anything with the sewer? Would we line the sewer, replace the water main? What would we do? I don't know. We haven't any trouble with the comment. Um, on the Department of Health comments that they have every year that was recommending for us to replace the undersized mains, and that one over there is only a four inch. It's it's undersized and needs to be looped and it needs to be upgraded to at least a six inch. Just and we talked about that last year. <clears throat> we got bids, didn't we? Didn't we get quotes? 
engineers' estimates. We had some kind of a lot of money. Oh, to loop it, was impossible. Yeah. Can we loop it with the one down below the ballpark hill? That's it. That already goes down there. <laughs> it does go down yeah. there? Okay. That's where the dead end's down there. That's the dead end? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, that's, I mean, you'd have to go back around up to the school. So, would the city of Good Thunder uh, fall under any guidelines? There's going to be a lot of money for infrastructure for small towns, you know, water and sewer and stuff. We have a little money in the bank. Would we qualify if we did a bigger project at all? You probably have too much in savings. Okay. That's all of our problem is we've got too much money. We're well, up. we've hashed it over before. I thought, I thought you and Bolton and Mink put together a proposal that we could choose and pick. And you have anything from Jeff at all? Or? I, I have information on the infil infiltration and inflow um, study for the MPCA there. We talked a little bit about grant monies too and kind of what we're up against, like, like you mentioned, is that we need to have either be showing that we have more debt or we need to be our rates for sanitary sewer and water need to be at one and a half percent of of the cost of the project. And I don't think our sanitary sewer and water monthly rates were up that high yet. Um, so it was a challenging for us to get RD and PFA funding. Well, how about the money that we have in a bank? Does that harm us also? I mean, our water treatment plant across the street, we've been doing something there for 15 years. We've gotten zero done except replace the high pressure pump, right, Brian? High service pump. Yep. High service pump. Yep. So, I mean, when we include all that in, in as far as in infrastructure for fresh water and dirty water? I don't have the answer to that. I don't hear that, Jeff. I thought we had Bolton and Mink do all this. This somewhere. I mean, let's get Jeff out here and have him talk about it. Okay. Special. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff was going to come tonight, but he was unable to come because he's traveling. And, yeah, yeah. And so he's he's here to kind of tell us what Jeff. Yeah, but that's the I and I business. I, I'm talking about this. What you're talking about is this old business that we had discussed, you know, last year already. <clears throat> and you know, I guess. If we've done our patching, we did our seal coating, and that project runs into the fall where we get new underground, and then we wait another year and put an overcoat on it. But then again, do you go to uh, doing sidewalk or uh, curb and gutter? I think we went, we, we uh, asked the people that lived on that street four or five years ago that the cost of their taxes going up would outvalue some of their houses. I think if I remember right. Yeah. So <clears throat> there, how, that end of holiday is very narrow. We put in a curb and gutter. They're going to lose. Some of them are going to lose their front yards. The only thing there, then you go. Well, we only have so much footage too. Is that a 50 foot? Or Probably front? 50. Um, we'd overlay there'd be a 24 foot street in there. of pavement. It would be a double wide. I mean, each adult would crush rock on the edges so they'd have parking along the edges. So they went, they're still going to be parking in the street. You know, so you'd have, it'd be laid out different, a little wider, you know. And I know we sent out things and the people that lived there did not want us. Right, yeah. I've even got calls on that. I mean, they just. But I mean, I guess it's up to us to get them a decent street. Right now they have not a decent street. You know, well, we can't get a deal. You know, <laughs> somebody's got to pay for it. So That's right. Yeah. Thing is, but I'm pretty sure that we've gone through this before, so we should have it. Like, I didn't bring my computer tonight, but I'm thinking it's in there. There's no water sewer. There is no storm there. No, nope. the only one is right there coming up uh, Chapel Hill, where we put a catch basin on both sides of the road. That's the only way to control the water with the thought of someday, if it was curb and guttered, you could slope it both ways to catch that water and the pipe going down the hill was big enough and adequate enough to handle it. But you can't control water without curb and gutter. Right. But we could put a blacktop mm -hmm. spill on it so we could try to control some of the water for a lot less money. You know, Is it a high volume street? Not, I bet you since the school closed, 
it's not as high highly used as it used to be. So <clears throat> maybe with future development, it could change too. Yeah. You know, that could increase. So you're saying our water rates would have to get up some more yet to qualify for any federal funding? If we're rural development funding or PFA funding, one and a half percent of the medium household income um, is what the sewer and water rates would have to be. Well, we upped them last year, right? A yeah, little bit. A tiny bit, yeah. But that we're still probably inadequate then yet? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So here we are. I guess we need to have Jeff come out if we need a special meeting in a couple, a week yeah, or two. Absolutely. So we can get the ball rolling here. Um, do we want him to include again the filtration system over here oh. under the whole thing, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Not to keep throwing boomerangs at you. I was last week. I attended the Minnesota Rural Water Convention in St. Cloud for three days of continuing education training. The keynote speaker and the main topic of the meeting is I always keep talking about different things that they keep throwing out, but the next one's manganese limits. And so for those that are thinking about putting in water treatment plants now and in the near future, manganese is the new hot topic that uh, they're going to put an MCL, which is a, a the minimum allowable amount of manganese you can have. And we have well water, which is higher and higher than manganese. So um, going forward, that's a consideration for our water treatment so how, how about the thing where they wanted the cities to uh soften the water at the yeah, plants and right now that's just kind of floating they're waiting for the for the ruling to come down on that i don't know you you guys are both and may, maybe more aware of what's happening you know they were talking about calcium limits they were talking about softening the water and using <laughs> ro systems to remove it or whatever it is have you heard anything about that lately? Uh, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of floating right now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The manganese and calcium and have been the hot topics, and the RO systems. I know, and here for example, put in a RO system to to help uh, yeah. mitigate some of that. But um, I don't think that's the way to go. But yeah, yeah. Amboy did that, didn't he? Yeah, they, and is it working? Does anybody know? They're struggling. Amboy's struggling with that RO that they put in. Okay, I claim they still don't have any water pressure over there. Hmm. They're expensive to run. They are expensive. Is that hard on copper pipes too? Yes. I was told it's hard on copper. Ooh, pure RO water, like we make where I work, um, has to be put in stainless steel or Schedule 80 PVC, or it'll leach the iron and minerals right out of the pipe, and you'll have holes in your pipe. So will that affect all the houses in town here? If I wouldn't this just you guys ever put in RO water. No, because it's copper lines from the main into most houses. So in it's other words, an iron pipe. 30 years from now or That's whatever, their pipe, pipe could be rotted out. Our old water's called hungry water. It's hungry. It's going to try to remineralize and pull in whatever it can from the pipe or whatever your water tower, if you don't have a good coating or anywhere you've got exposed. So if we were ever mandated to soften it over there, is that the way to go? No, they'd probably do lime softening, I would imagine. They, you guys put in any lime systems or? Not to my knowledge. No. See, nobody's having to do it yet because they haven't come down with the MCL yeah. for it. So until they do that, then then they'll, they'll, they'll react to it. But so what would I keep do? saying, you guys keep saying, let's do it this year, let's do it this year. And I keep saying, well, they're going to come out with a new uh, MCL for this and that and it's like what you know can you even design a water plant nowadays with with the capacity you need to treat these different things that are coming down the pipe yeah i would have to get with our environmental yeah. staff to, to review some of those requirements but i know like for example with the ro systems you can inject minerals after because you call yeah they remineralize so yeah they remineralize some of that um but some of the newer requirements i can't speak to right now so here's the worst case scenario. What happens when our trays over there, which are being held together by rust right now, collapse? We will not be able to aerate our water. So what kind of what kind of work would we do to get that? Would we just replace them at that point and run it again until the state decides or whoever? Well, there's different things you can do to oxidize the iron in the water. You could Spray it. put in an, an it's called an atomerator. 
And then the Tom Raider is a fine bubble diffuser. It goes through a stone and it's in, in a pipe. So you have an air compressor that runs when the well runs and it introduces air and that oxidizes the iron and then it settles out in the filters. There is ways around it. You can also chlorinate upstream of the of the uh, filter and you can get some oxidation that way as long as you have time for it to sit in a filter and let the minerals drop out. So there, there is some patchy things you can do to get by if that would happen. Well, it's not if, it's when. It is. Yeah, it is when. Those... You wouldn't want to put something up that they... Because we had our, uh, in long run. our annual inspection last year from Amy Lynch in the Department of Health. She looked around in there and looked at our filter and everything and she said, you guys really need to start planning. You're at the end of a the useful life for this unit. So uh, we've known it for a long time. It's just we keep kicking the can down the road. And yeah, but one of these days, then we're going to collapse and you aren't going to be able to aerate the water properly. So then we're going to be in a big scurry to get this all done correctly, right? True. Yeah, true. So do we, when Jeff is out here and this guy here, we ask him to start working on this now? Oh, I believe that they have done that already. I've seen drawings. They, they, they came up with a drawing one time and it had a chlorine room and a fluoride room and the HVAC and everything. Yeah. And it was very expensive, but that that stuff is expensive. When you get into municipal grade equipment and building and HVAC and all the requirements that you have to have fluoride and your uh, fluoride and your uh, phosphate in one room, you can have your... Yeah, I remember talking about having little rooms on there to have the things in there and then just running them through the wall. But we never continue on. Well, why don't we have Jeff come out and yep. bring the information he has and we can pick it apart then when we know. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep. All right. So if we go and redo this now and then two years from now, the state mandates that, we'd have to go to the... Yeah, you'll have to meet your MCL no matter what. Yeah. What is MCL? Minimum contaminant limit. Okay. But we might be able to add, like you're saying, add something to something new over there. You no, know, no. Cover that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So us right now, this summer, if we did a water main and uh, we did any part of this over here, do you think we could qualify for any money there from the state? I mean, we've been awful conservative. We have money, but in reality, everybody uh, else gets free money and we get nothing. Not a lot of money, though, either. No, That's no. Kind of stuff. This is, you know. You were yeah. mentioning, I just want to clear, clarify, yeah. Yeah. in order to qualify for like a PFA loan and, and a low, a grant, those, yeah. those kinds of monies, you said you got to be a, the water rate's got to be one and a half percent of the median household income. Yeah, that's correct. That's eleven $1 hundred and twelve dollars a year just for water, just for a house per house. So that's uh, four hundred dollars a quarter, or three hundred dollars a quarter, three hundred, three hundred bucks, three hundred bucks a quarter. Yep. I just looked it up. The median household income in Good Thunder is seventy four thousand one hundred and sixty seven dollars. So. And right now, if we had a guess, typical water bill in the city of Good Thunder is what, two fifty, two twenty, a year? Yeah, yeah. Well, a year. Now we're talking water, just yeah. water. Yeah. yeah. I know mine was like two fifty last quarter for water in my house, so I ain't too far no, from that. No, 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 it wasn't. Your total bill is probably two fifty. Well, you're right. You yeah, garbage, you're right. You're you're right. Sewer, yeah, garbage, sewer. The sewer is in there. Yeah, contingency right. fees yeah. and everything else in there. Yeah. I'm talking just the water bill. It's probably your water bill is probably twenty five bucks, thirty five bucks somewhere in there. Never. Nobody would turn the faucet on. Well, you wouldn't be able to afford it. Well, that's that's where I'm going. You know, we always bring this grant business up. Mm -hmm. What good does that do to even talk about? So then, might let's as well just, just put the bill yeah, and go to work. Yeah, let's just let's just talk to Jeff and go from there. Yeah, we got to talk to him anyway. So yeah, yeah. all these other towns around here, their water bills aren't that high. Um, but you're running. I, I understand most they are up there. Really, both well, the towns don't have money sitting in the bank though, like we do. And the auditors have said that we're sitting on money, and that. But that doesn't, doesn't make any lot. difference to his equation, though. No, but it makes a difference when, uh, with granting because we've got money sitting there, so no one wants to give us grant money when we're just sitting on money anyways. Oh. Anyway, 
I guess chances are my water could be about a hundred and maybe I just say a hundred dollars and just say my uh, sewer is 150 because that's higher. And then the water, the sewer or the uh, refuge on there, you know, because that's in there. 50. Yeah. So in other words, mine would have to go up $200 yeah. to qualify. Yeah. So that's another $800 a year right there. Yeah. yeah you wouldn't Next. do it in the fall center. Well, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Forget about the grant. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So in that conversation, I got a little lost. So we started out talking about steel coating the roads. Then we went to holiday about fixing that, but there's a water main that needs to be looked at. An inadequate one. So... But we're talking special meeting. Now we're getting over to the Water treatment plant, correct? Well, we're just trying to 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 bundle it. Okay, all right. Tom explained bundling. I don't think we'll work on this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I, I think on all this water because half of the the abbreviations everybody's throwing out, I have absolutely no idea what we're talking about to most of it. So I think a special meeting on that would be a great idea yeah. to pull together, get me a little more educated too. But then let's go back then to seal coating the roads. That that we can do excluding holiday, but we want to postpone that until probably April to, or till frost. Well, until the frost stops, so we know what the streets look like. Okay, All right. and get a second bit. How much they buckled right and, and second quotes. If a small town went out and bonded for say three hundred thousand bucks right now, what would the interest rate be? Just to kind of have an idea. It would be three to four percent. It would be four percent for a small town through rural govern or rural rural water. Or... Well, right now, where we're sitting is we're waiting, Ashney. We're waiting for a couple more numbers from her. Um, let's see here. We got we had all the water connection annual sales data, um, but we're going to reach out. We just need the sanitary sewer. Let's see water annual sales data, and then we can run a few more calculations on these rural development grants and the PFA grants, and we can have a little bit more grasp what exactly we're up against but there's no two or three percent money then obviously left it's all going to be around that four hundred rates are going to be more oh, what in the open market the, the size of town doesn't matter as much uh, the most recent ones we've seen for general revenue bonds have been about 3.85 percent that's four to six weeks ago you know so i i think you're looking at probably you know a little over four percent this week paying out you know, the specific bond that's not general revenue that'd be probably a half percent higher. Mm -hmm. All right. That seal code didn't cover that, that South Hall right. anyway. Yeah. No. Uh, that would be on top. <laughs> that would be three, four years down the road after right. your black top, but you let it go for three years, I think this yeah. year. And years. then you reseal it. So maybe the next cycle, it would be qualified if it got if done we this year. Repaired it. Yeah. So, okay, getting back to the seal coating, have race, somebody get a hold of some more bids, right? Yeah, we have to, yeah. Yep. And then uh, we need to get started really quick and get out and get people to do our patching as soon as we can this year, because last year we were really at well, the end. Couldn't get them. Couldn't get them, no. Well, they might be tied up already this year, too. Because they got the big contracts, they're not going to go come out and yeah. do a hundred thousand dollars with a patching. Yeah. All right, race. Uh, you got some water tower painting. I think Ron was looking more. I just got the last time we did that. Um, water tower painting is yeah, just a matter of um, we got to get somebody in to look. The company that we usually get, I guess, just come in and see what problems there are on there as far as welding or anything you know if they got we uh see inside or whatever they do with it to seal it and then uh i mean the paint ain't terrible but it's just right you paint it right away too when i was in st cloud last week i talked to the guys from central tank coatings they're the ones that take care of our water tower have been historically and uh we are due for uh interior inspection and they said when they were here to do that, because they need to drain the bowl, 
and sediment bowl that needs to be drained. And then we bring the water tower level down and then they inspect the interior and then they give us a report. They would at the same time inspect the exterior and give you an estimate for the patching or the, 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 the they would spall it and then prime it and paint the bad areas or, or do the whole thing. But um, anyway, they said they do that when they were here and that I gave them, I told him to call City Hall or talk to Ray. He says he'll be the one that's kind of on site while they're here. We'll have to maintain a level below the bowl, you know, in the riser pipe with a regulator out here on the thing. So somebody will have to kind of man that. But anyway, um, I told them to call down and I don't know how if you guys issue purchase orders or how you do that, but um, to get us on their list of inspections for this summer do we have to they've been routinely maintaining our water tower for many many years now do we have to get two bids for that too it, it depends on what they're doing inside and how much it costs um oh i'm sure let's say when eagle lake did it they did not have to get to the two bids because it just didn't cost them no yeah so you may be below the numbers but I, I would have to look at the numbers I'm pretty sure it'd be anywhere from 20. We can call them and come and inspect it. 2050. Yeah, That's the main thing they got to do. Yeah, they can come and inspect it. They give you ideas what the numbers are going to be. If I would caution you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one time I called for a bid from another competitor of Central Tanks. And I told him at the time I needed two bids. And he offered me to get me a higher bid because they have, <laughs> they owned a couple different companies. Uh, and this was a pretty big name company offered to give me, that's Ridry. They offered to give me a bigger bid from a, it was pretty sad. I was disappointed. I never went with them again. <laughs> but, but we're learning that we can't do the old, oh, I know, I know. Old you, stuff you, you got to get too big, but I had somebody make me that offer. I'll get you a higher bid if you want. So I can get the bid. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Oh. I know. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> so, um, well, we'll just have to call them and come and inspect the tank. Uh, yeah, they can, the tower. Yeah. In inspection. Yeah, they can come and inspect the tank, and that's not going to be a problem because I provided your routine. So I would say, room. yeah, if, Blake, if I was calling Blake, Race, Race, Race uh, wants to call them and set up a time, yeah. that'd be great. At All least you got to do is get two bids, right? Most no, likely. not for the inspection. Down, down the road. Down the road. But they can come and inspect it. Okay. Well, when they inspect it, they'll kind of give them. Yeah, they'll inspect cost it. They'll give us a report. They'll say, here's what it's going to cost to fix the interior. And here's our estimate for the exterior. Then you can take those and maybe get a second bid against it. You might have an exception to the bidding requirements anyway. So once we get that done, we can take a look at it. Whether or not you'd have to actually get the second bid or you can go one way. All right. You can call them and get them on get on our, their list anyway, because they won't be they won't do that until after it's nicer out because you got to run a fire hydrant half the day. So winter probably won't be over for another six weeks. So yeah. it'll be a while. Anything else in as far as your shop? That's all. That's all I have. All right. Uh, water sewer update, Brian. You've been throwing a little bit. I kind of did it already. Yeah. Yeah. I covered everything. I. The ponds are in good shape. I'm not in any uh, threat of uh, having to do a hurry-up discharge this spring. We're in good shape. So maybe this would be a good time to move up the I and I talk. Yeah, right. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Because we have you here, and yeah. we're on our sewer water. So that sounds good. I'm Joe Smith of Fort Been helping Jeff out with the I and I report. And he was not able to make it tonight, like Brian said, he's traveling. So I'm going to present the filtration and intro at their sewer system. The reason for the report is the NPCA flag and we as a city have had to do because there's more water going down the pond down to the pond than they're supposed to be. So in a perfect world, the same amount of drinking water and um, fresh water should equal the amount of wastewater that goes down to the pond. But we're finding that that's not the case. And what causes that is two items. We'll call it I and I. It's infiltration and inflow. So essentially groundwater that's getting in the sound sanitary sewer system and then going down to the ponds to be treated. That water doesn't need to be treated because it's not sanitary sewer water. So the, re 
I guess the report has five sections. Number one is the introduction. And what this gets into is we have five years of data from 2016 to 2021, six years of data. And what we did is we compared the, the fresh water to the sanitary sewer water being discharged out of the ponds. And it's in, in the sewer water being discharged anywhere from 12% more than the drinking water, which is actually a good number. We're talking fine with that. But then it's up to 108% more than the drinking water. So that's slightly over double. And we're not okay with that. And that's what the MPCA is flagging. Um, and that's why we're having to discharge the ponds ahead of time. So the, the year of 108% was in 2019, which was, which was a wet year. Um, and then since 2019, things are going down, which I think can be attributed to the city's been doing improvement projects, right? You've lined some mm -hmm. sanitary sewer. Uh, we had the county road project where we disconnected an egg tile and we've replaced some clay sanitary sewer mains with PVC. So that number's trending downward, but we only have two years after 2019. And with 20, 2020 and 2021 being a little bit dry, um, It'll be interesting to see where, how that mellows out if we get a wet year, if we see that surge way up to that double, or if it stays lower because of the improvements that the city has been doing. So the MPCA requires, and the reason for this report is we need to identify potential issues where we think the I and I is coming from, and what we recommendations that we could do to, to mitigate the I and I. So part two is efforts to identify the infiltration and inflow. Um, we have two efforts that we've taken. Minnesota Rural Water was here to assist with some smoke testing. The purpose of smoke testing is to try and find if there's a direct connection between the storm sewer and the sanitary sewer, which we don't want, right? If a catch basin, rainwater goes in the catch basin directly into the sanitary sewer, that's just a ton of water going down the pond to be treated that does not need to be treated. So the, the issue with that, is the report noted no substantial findings and the reports of the testing testing are not available. They're not in our possession. So in 2018 and 2019, the city televised some clay sanitary sewer lines to determine conditions of the pipe. Pipe with open joints were lined with cured in place PVC pipe. And several of the segments um, were both televised and lined. So that's part two, our two efforts to identify the infiltration and inflow. And then part three, efforts to reduce infiltration and inflow. Uh, we replaced clay pipes with new PVC piping, installed new uh, precast concrete manholes to replace brick and brick and um, block and mortar manholes. And we've replaced sanitary sewer services that are clay between the main and the right of way line. Part four, potential future corrective actions. The city could consider moving forward to further mitigate the infiltration and inflow. Number one is, is certainly the simplest. It, it would be look for the smoke testing records uh, from when rural development was here. And if we if we can find those records, we can confirm the results and from there prepare a plan for disconnecting any storm sewer connections into the sanitary sewer that may have been found. Okay, number two. If the smoke testing results are unavailable, we could conduct smoke testing is something Fulton MA can provide. Again, there we, we would record the findings this time, um, keep a record of them, and then from there prepare a plan for disconnecting surface water into the sanitary sewer. Option number three is to monitor sanitary sewer flows within the sanitary sewer districts. And what that is, is we can physically go down and into, we would identify some of the trunk mains in town, maybe four or five, you know, intelligently picked locations. And we can put a monitoring device down in the manhole to physically monitor the amount of flow going through the manhole. What you'd want to do is leave that in for a month or a period of time in the spring, in the wet season, or early summer even. What you'd like to see is during a couple big rainfall events, you'd want to collect that data and see how that sanitary sewer flow increases or decreases when it's raining. Because it, obviously if, it, if the amount of sanitary sewer flow shoots up when it's raining, that tells us there's a lot of groundwater entering the sanitary sewer system. Brian, one question about last rain event when we had quite a little rain that one day, did it go up oh, that day? It did, yeah. I don't have the exact number for you. It's on my clipboard, but I enter the numbers at the end of the month and then it charts it. You saw that. Yeah. Um, so I haven't entered it yet, but it did go up. So in other words, it went up around 100, to 100,000. 
Yeah, I know that. In one day or in you know, a yeah. two day period? Yeah. When typically we get 35,000, 40,000 on a day, it flipped up to 100,000 for a few days. So not like it used to though. It used to get a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, I mean, on the years go by, we, the improvements you guys have been making have certainly helped yeah, with the infiltration yeah. inflow, absolutely. What yeah. the sanitary sewer analysis would, it would just hopefully allow us to pinpoint these locations and be able to zone in on. If I could, so, before you go too far, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to correct one thing because it's on public record here. Um, we did not get the INI mandate from the MPCA because we discharge outside the acceptable discharge period. We've never done that. But we, we, it is a part of our new permit, which we were just issued, um, has an INI um, uh, subpart that says we have to identify and have a plan going forward. Okay, That's so there a, was not a premature discharge. No, we did not never had a, a discharge outside the monitoring. Okay, thanks the, for correcting the, me. Yeah. I think in the 20 years I've been here, there was one when we had 13 inches of rain in September. Um, we had one that was outside the the window, you know, for discharge. Yeah. And I remember because I had to estimate how much river water was flowing at the time we were discharging and the ratio and all this stuff. Okay. So maybe one time and that was a long time ago. Okay. So, yeah, it was just because it's part of our new permit. Okay. Thanks for that correction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we talked about the sanitary sewer flow analysis and then Number four would be to um, enforce the city ordinance restricting floor drains and sump pump connections into the sanitary sewer system. That'd be a good one. Um, so there, there would be if um, you know the, a, a home has a footing tile going around the outside and that footing tile is directly discharging into the sanitary sewer system. That'd be groundwater we could eliminate and get the installation of a sump pump pit yeah. and discharge out to the road. Or do an inspection on each house to make sure their sump pump isn't going into the floor drain. Yeah. And, there, and that is in part That's of in our ordinance. We have an ordinance for that. And we've done that, all that, over the years. Hiller was here at the time he did it, I think, but since then. A long time ago. And went back. Are there records of those inspections? Mm. If they were, they'd be at the shop. But Brian did it. Brian, yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Brian. Beckel. Beckel. He, I guess he did some, too. Yeah. Well, if, the, if there were records of it, that would certainly be helpful or else um, we're probably due for another. Yeah, and round of inspections. Sorry, I didn't mean it. No, it's okay. I apologize. Okay, so we went through some uh, potential future corrective actions. And then the last part of the report is the recommendations. Um, so based on based on the four alternatives uh, that we went through, is recommended that we proceed with alternatives one through four, which is which is all of them. I mean, so the main one and two are one and the same. One number one was to locate the smoke testing records if they're available, and number two is if those smoke testing records are not available to go ahead and obtain or conduct smoke testing and document the results. Number three monitor sanitary sewer flows within the sewer shed districts, just to, again, try and hone in on those problematic areas, um, dig a little deeper into those, those areas and find a way to plan. Number four, alternative number four to be continued, which was enforce the city ordinance of restricting floor drains, as some pump connections into the sanitary sewer. One, um, way we could beef up that ordinance, the city could consider adding to the ordinance that at the time of a sale that the home be televised, the sanitary sewer and the sump pump set up be televised at the time of a sale. And then any corrective action that needs to be taken, those dollars could be um, used at the time of the sale. The seller would have to pay for it type of thing. If there is a direct footing connection that needs to be corrected. The city of Mapleton does have an ordinance that they currently enforce that does exactly that at the time of the sale. There are a few appendix photos to show in the report um, that document the improvements that the city has been doing that have been effective, as Brian also noted. And then the sewer ordinance, the current city sewer ordinance also attached to report. Do you have footages of how much we've aligned and footages of the new re replace 
Do you have a record of that? You know, we we lined a bunch and then we went across the field and we installed new. So does Bolton and Mink have a record of what we've done already, the footages of it? I would say no, not of all the lining that's been done. Really? The, the, the projects that dirt merchants assist in here doing. Sorry, you're talking about cutting across the field. Yeah, there, yeah but we do have that. But you do not have anything about all the footages that we've lined. I do not believe so. Wow, who did that? We need to get a copy of that from them people, don't we? I would almost guess it's all on tape, but with the stop shop. Hey, you should have. It was Empire, wasn't it? Right, with all that on there. Was it Empire pipe? Yeah, usually there's yeah. a thumb drive tape to the Empire. Yeah, the... usually a three ring binder with a report and then a thumb drive in there. Have you ever yeah. seen anything like that up there? Yeah, I know. But... I can definitely look for it tomorrow. Uh, look under televising city sewers. Uh, uh, I call Empire and they can just get, they can send it to you. Yeah. Uh, they'll send you a, a file that you can download or else they'll send you in the mail a thumb drive with it all on there. Because we did what, at least uh, there on 66 when they rebuilt that road, we <laughs> relined all that. That's got to be uh, what, uh, 15, 1800 feet? I think that's here. That on the, the red. Yeah. That's the red. Yep. The yeah. red is yeah. blind yeah. existing. That's the first thing we did. Yeah. So so we're we're there, but just the actual video footage would be it would be helpful to have any televising that's been done. Yeah. So there's a current one. There's the last piece we did right there. Yeah. yeah. So it is here. It just it don't have done. footage. Just, right. Yeah. But they have record of it if it's here. Yeah. Well, when would you, I mean, we want to proceed with the I and I uh, putting the stuff in the manholes. The flow analysis. Yep. We need to move within the next 30 days, right? Yeah. So, Bolton and Mink, we have 15 of the units um, that we can use. They're kind of spoken for in the early spring here, but we think we could get them um, for kind of late spring or summertime, which would still be effective. We just have to get them in our biggest time will be was a bet will be when the frost goes out of the ground, and I guess you know we could manually look at some of the main intersecting manholes and see where the flow is up. I suppose you know I did that once years ago. Okay. This thing that he's he's got here for us is to satisfy the first part. I got contacted by Teresa Roth from the MCPCA that said when we renewed our permit, we had 90 days yeah. to yeah. come up with what he has in his hand there. Just a report stating that, yes, we know we have I and I. Yes, we've taken these steps, and yes, we're going to take these steps. What he has, that satisfies that, and that'll take her, that'll make her happy. Okay. And, then, and then we can go forward and do our whatever steps we pick and choose as long as we're making progress. It doesn't all have to be at once. It can be Brian's, slow. And Brian's exactly right. And just uh, from being in agreement about the report and what, and what we're going to submit to the NPCA in the report. Yeah. So would we have, want to make a motion tonight to uh, do that as soon as those are available? Put us on that list for the next people out, right? That's... Stop. Yeah, whatever you need. The sewer flows you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That and the smoke. That and the smoke. How about the uh, companies that smoke? Is that uh well, we can provide that as well. Oh, you do that yeah. too? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's relatively simple action. And we yeah. kind of yeah, there's a the rural water does it too. We're a member of rural water. I think we might be able to get it. Okay. Or if they have the reports from the last time they were in town too, that would be great. Could you call Minnesota Rural Water and ask them if they have their report from when they smoke tested good thunder? They might have them. Yeah, because they were they did it last time, right? Yeah. 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 And what else was there? Uh, hmm. Oh, so you need to just vote tonight, right, to accept this as our as our what we're going to turn into the NBC. But if that correction is not made yet, with the, the part about the discharge out of the acceptable yeah, limit, that'll I would like to that. reword that before we accept that as our plan. So, yeah. This is just strictly being done because it was a permit requirement. Understood. Okay, somebody want to make a motion then to accept this report tonight with that exception or correction and that to get on Bolton and Mink's list and 
soon as possible to get our meters in our manholes for this spring. Who, who sends this to the MPCAU? Yeah, if Don Ross will send it. I mean, yeah, I mean, your office. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll make a motion then. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye opposed. Motion carried. What are other towns doing? Do, do other towns have a lot of I and I also? Of course, I mean, it's been dry lately. You guys are absolutely not alone in this I and I battle. Um, yeah. Mapleton, they, they, their big thing they're doing with the projects is going to be putting feed services all the way up to the home during the construction project. Um, they have some teeth in their in their city ordinance to, to be able to do that. So so that's a strategy. Um, Red Oak Falls in the community, they, they're doing a sump pump inspection program. So they're going around like a four-year thing to every house and look in the basement and look for putting tile connection. But, Otherwise, other communities are doing the exact same thing you guys are doing, smoke testing, lining sanitary sewer layers, trying to disconnect. So when they look for that footing uh, tile connection, do they go down through the basement drain then and televise? Yes. Until they get outside the house? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this home phone connection, one, you just do that, you just knock on the door and they have to let you in and, yeah. and look and see. When I used to read the water meters and walk from house to house, I didn't see very many hoses out outside the basements draining their pump pump onto the yard. And you see that patch of green grass there where you know they've been discharging. It's few and far between in this town. Yep. There is them. All right. Well, thank you. Yep. And do we need a motion to uh, have a meeting with Jeff within the next? Seven to ten days or whatever. Do we get going on this? Right. What I mean, the holiday street improvements. You'll have to give us a couple of dates. You know. Okay, that sounds good. Somebody want to make that a motion to uh, move forward on meeting with Jeff? I will. All right. Someone else second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye opposed. Carried. All right. Anything else to add? Nothing for me. Thank All right. You. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Brian, you got anything more? Uh, thank you. All right. Okay, we're down to community comment. Anybody in the community? Comment? I was just wondering, maybe I misunderstood last month, but I was wondering about getting the snow removed off the boulevard down on Halliday. Yeah, I kind of made that comment that, you know, we back drag it and push it down the end, but if you notice, the end is really really full of snow. It never got pushed back far enough to the beginning of the winter and now we are in trouble. So only thing we could do is basically haul it off, right? Yeah. You know, do we wanna have race work at that in the next week or two, taking that down? Really soft down by the ponds right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, sure we got problems has. there too, yep. But Wednesday is going to be forty, so yeah, it's going. It's not going to be possible to haul any place. Too soft. Yeah. It's yep. just ruining that road down there. Would you want to live with that for another? Well, I don't know. This year it could be, be gone. It's probably gone in a month. You know, could you possibly put up with it for another thirty days? That could have killed me. I'll be okay. <laughs> All right. Pull it off the street under the boulevard, then roll under the sidewalk, but gives me something to do. I'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Anybody else? I think that's something we'll have to remember for next year. Yep. Yep. Especially when they do a very good job of keeping their sidewalks clean. Yeah. So next year, the snow will be pushed back in that field a long ways that we aren't in the trouble we're in now. It's right at the edge of the road. So a snow fence needs to be 125 feet into the field, <laughs> at least this year. Anybody else under community comment? Um, I'm just curious where we go from here with the school now that the city's got it and Mike's involved. Do you know what he's what his plans are? We have it here in our uh, in our unfinished business about purchase agreement with the school sign and then uh, turn around and. Need to come up to Mike. I thought it was pretty strong. No, it's not done. Oh, okay. There was what was some corrections. Some corrections, yeah. There was two things that had to be changed in there, right? 
And uh, well, first I, of all, we had to meet at a meeting to do it, you know. So and then that was uh, the main thing. I believe Mike wanted it surveyed too before he purchased it, done. and he was going to foot that bill. Done. It's yeah, surveyed. Like done. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Thanks, sir. All right. right, so he wanted to have it surveyed. He was footing the bill for that, so he wanted to know where the property lines were. So there was just other things there that he wanted in order and us wanted it. Everybody wanted it in order correctly. Do you know what happened with the sale of the Men Lake School? Because that was sold in Delta. You know what? As of right now, it might be tonight, but... They're, now they're auctioning everything off in there. So I think it was what I heard. It was misrepresented, and when it come down to the final thing, the individual said, "This isn't what I was told," and pulled back. Okay. That's all I know. Second hand yep. or third, I, I can't hear the same thing. Yep. You know. So that's where we're at, and we guarantee that City of Good Thunder isn't going to own that any longer than it takes. Hopefully to have the ink dry. We, we are not in the, that business. Mike Drummer is pretty excited about getting in there and providing 12 to 15 what 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 affordable affordable housing units for the city of Good Thunder. He said too a long time ago that that building is way too good to be torn down and destroyed. You know, so if you've got a family of two or three, you know, Good Thunder population could go up by 35, 40 people, you know, which would be good for everybody. One question, <clears throat> how many kids are in that school? I have no idea. <laughs> I got three. That sewer there would be more than adequate to do 12 to 15 Portable housing units versus all those little tykes going down there to go to school and going to the bathroom, right? I mean, we should not be in any trouble with the pollution control for capacity. Or converting the school into single family homes yeah. in that area. There had to be almost yeah. 150 kids down there, there, didn't it? How there much? Over 200. So we had 200 little, little people, <laughs> and now we might have 35 to 40 people. We should be good, right? Yeah, that decrease in sanitary sewer flows. Yeah. I'm not sure on the exact setup of the pipe. You know, we have to add individual services for the homes. But I mean, in reality, if there's 200 of them little guys and the gals there, they're going to the bathroom all the time, all the time, it should be a lot less. Yeah, circuit from a flow standpoint, a right. decrease. All right. We didn't want to get this cart ahead of the horse and then find out, you know, because I know one time, we were limited to how many houses we could possibly build because of the lagoon, okay. but we lost 200 little people going to that school, and now we're going to gain some adults and maybe some children. So we should be good. The toilet anyway. Pardon? Probably never flushed the toilet anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. That was one question I had. All right. Back to community comment. Anybody? I just have um, got the letter about doing reviewing city codes. I know Jim's at his last basketball game, but he's still interested. I know Sue's here as well. I'm here. So I asked last month, you were gone. So now I'm asking again, where are we at in that process? Oh, well, Kellen was gone this month. And so he wanted to be on. Yep. So I wanted to wait till after Easter now. Let's wait till after, because you got Lent and everything else. You got to go to meetings on and church and whatnot. So let's just wait till after. So the last I was told, we're going to pick and choose. Like, who are we just going with the ones that were interested? Are we voting? Is there any more? Oh, there was the, so four or five people that originally, you know, volunteered. Well, at one time there was talk about seeing if there was anybody else and then picking that. And there was, but we did that and okay. it wasn't. And everybody's just all happy. So I think that we'll just go with the ones that are volunteered that was just a i think chris just made the comment you should at least ask them yeah. you know you shouldn't just assume from a meeting that they're going to do it it should be asked and so that's why we did that well i'm kind of speaking on jim too because he's at a basketball game so yeah it's still good <laughs> so i mean i'm just saying that we'll wait till after easter here and i'll we'll get together and kevin will be back by then so we if we can give them the mornings that they could start at least looking at them your ordinances are all online. They can start looking at them anytime they want. Yeah. Well, she made yeah. copies of them too. So you can and it's nice to have paper copies, but I think that it's nice 
we, we got some talking to do as a committee and we'll do that as a committee as to how we'll do this because we don't want to do it a hundred times. One thing about a paper com copy, if you're sitting here and people have suggestions, you can make notes. That's true, but it's very hard to make red lines in paper. So it'd be nice to do a red line copy so that we all know what's changed, what hasn't changed. And then when we're all done, we can vote on, you know, the, the right way. We don't have to go through a hundred pages, you know, and, oh, I forgot to put that red line through there. You know, it'll be official. Maybe One person will do it. The sheriff's meeting still a thing too then? Because you were going to meet with them on what they're going to enforce and what they're not? That is still coming. That's not a part of the actual ordinance committee, but yeah. It's yeah. still coming? Yeah. And I would think the new sheriff would want to meet how many serves. Does he does he go around, Chris, that you know of and meet with the people they serve or not? I haven't seen him do that yet. I would imagine that he will. Okay. Wasn't there That's supposed to be a date set up last time? Yeah, before this meeting, there was supposed to be a specific date asking to come um, set up. No, because we were putting it off until the committee could review the things before we had a meeting with them. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Community comment? Uh, I, I just want to make one comment. Um, I've been asked not to make this comment, but uh, Robert, the Red Iron, Jason, did, and Jen did not get their tobacco license. And Robert comes home and grumbles. So I pick up the phone and I call. Four hours later, somebody walked into the Red Iron with the license. In other words, the process was unknown after four years of being clerk. It's a false statement, but it needs to be. That's a false statement. It needs to be addressed as a council. And I understand you probably want to do it privately. No, we can do it publicly. On February 8th, I submitted all your paperwork. Scott came in a day before I brought it to the Red Iron. I had followed up numerous times. I followed up when you came in, and then I had it approved. Tom had already had it signed, and it was sitting here. Yeah. I know the process. You don't understand the process, and that's fine. And you're welcome to feel that way and make those comments. But you don't know the whole truth, so I'm sorry. I brought it as soon as soon as I had it signed. I took it to them. I'm not holding up their process. They had the paper in November. They could have submitted it. They didn't. I wasn't you holding up the process. Thing about that, though, is it went by three meetings, and it was supposed to be on the agenda. The lady at the I didn't get it until Robert brought it and handed it to me Scott after a private or a personnel meeting. Scott had it originally, right? I brought it to that meeting. Yeah. And it wasn't when on I the gave agenda. it back to you that night, whatever. Yeah. That was the first time. I talked to the lady at the state, and she said that the process was taken care of. And four hours later, she comes into the red iron with the tobacco license. This is not acceptable. There's no way it suddenly was okay then. The guy called me the next day, a guy did from the state, and he told me the state has no say on who gets tobacco license. All you do is turn in the paperwork to the state. They're a collection of who has tobacco licenses in the state of Minnesota. The entity in this case, Good Thunder, had the power to give the license the day the paperwork was set in, sent in. And it wouldn't have showed up that day if I wouldn't have made two phone calls to the state. Vicki, if you think you can do my job better, maybe you should. Maybe you should. Okay, well, up. let's just, we'll take this all under advisement now. We have our license. This doesn't have to go any farther. We're happy we got our license. So everybody's got... Every people got to express their views. So are we good? No, no, we're not good because this is continually happening. I just want to say though that as soon as she got whatever it was that she needed from the state, she texted me and I came right in and signed it. When was that? I don't know what I don't know. I followed the same process that I followed for the Dakota Martin for the Thunder for the Red Iron. I followed the same process for four years. But they would if have the been a re change it. They would have been a renew instead of a new. Well, if the council wants to change the process, change the process. As soon as I had the things, I called Tom. I had Tom sign it. And as soon as I got the okay from everybody, I brought them down. Yeah. I was under the understanding it was motioned and carried 
at the closed meeting on February 2nd. She could have submitted it that day and he could have had his license the next day they could have. We can't motion to approve things like that at closed meetings anyways. Uh, it would have been at a public meeting. Closed meeting, it would have been at a public meeting because Same. you told us it couldn't be at a closed meeting. Right. It had to wait meeting. until the last meeting. The 13th was an open meeting. And it wasn't approved. This was March 2nd and 3rd that I called and got a call back from the state. All right. Like I say, take it all under advisement. We got our license. No well, thanks to the clerk. So, all right. So Anybody Vicky, else? With... Rid of her. Vicky, you should do this job. I bet you'd be great at it. Well, let's not fight back and forth. Yeah, let's move on. Let's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Back. But, that, but that's the thing. I'm getting attacked again, and I don't get to have a say every time. Yes, just, yeah, just yeah, relax. Go to you, Jen. No, actually, just relax. Just take it easy. Okay. Let's. <laughs> anybody else? Like that gets just silly. Um, the department's change, over. Change the subject. <laughs> change the subject. Put a smile on. Um, Dan Fitzsimmons at the at the um uh. Elevator has a sign up sheet down there for uh, if you sign his sheet, it's giving him permission to speak on our behalf when he goes to the county commission meetings and he asks for the county to enforce the conditional use permit for the compost site. You've all maybe smelled that from time to time. It's horrid. Um, at my place, it's gagging us. It's 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 putrid. Anyway, um, anybody who wants to swing by the elevator and wants to sign that, that he can speak on our behalf and represent us. He gets three minutes to speak, and he was at the last meeting. He did do a speech, and I think the county is leaning towards enforcing the conditional use regarding the odor. So, and it was in town here in the last seven yes. to ten days, multiple times. It's it's you'll know it when you smell it. It's like dead animal fish. Thank you. That's very good to know. So the citizens can go down there and stop in and absolutely. So he's fighting to to just make the county enforce the permit that's already in okay. place. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. There's already a conditional use permit with uh, restrictions regarding odor. And that's in the protein sources building that they have the sign. That's up? what he said. He'd have it down there. So if not, it's Dan Fitzsimmons. You can reach him down there or at his. Yeah. Look him up. I don't know. Yeah, he's down there multiple times during the yes, week. Yes, he is. So. Yeah. Very good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Anybody else sent under community comment? If not, then we'll move on to unfinished business, which we had our I and I presentation from Joe already. Um, purchase agreement with the school signed. Do we have a purchase agreement then? Or? In front of you, or it was in front of Tom's cup. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, how will the time frame work on this? So, does somebody from the city have to go down to the courthouse and sign it from here to Drummer? Then the way it. So this, it. this is the purchase agreement. So this is the city agreeing that they're going to purchase it. This then will go to Kelsey Getlicker at um, the title company, and they will set the closing date then once they have this. Once we have a purchase agreement signed with them, then Drummer can move forward and sign a purchase agreement with the city but we have to have ours signed before he can sign his. And we can close the same day on both properties. So motion has already been made to follow through on this. No, we need a new no, motion. No, to... no, we've just given Chris the authority to develop this. We have a motion accepting the purchase agreement. You can sign the purchase agreement. So, so just clarify what you were saying, Mr. Mayor. At the closing, they'll put together two deeds, and those are the deeds that get filed with the county recorder's office. So, actually, transfer the property into the city of Good Thunder, then from the city of Good Thunder to dance with you, Mr. Drummer. Has. If you had to guess how long a time frame will that take from now until it gets drawn up, we can meet Mike and be done. I think the, the, the only delay here will be the closing company. He's got the survey done, he's got everything else put together. Um, I, I don't see why it couldn't be done in 14 days. Okay. But I'm surprised on that stuff all the time. But but there really should be no delay. Anybody want to look at this or before we sign it or? You've seen it, right? Well, I wouldn't yeah. mind. 
Yeah. There was just a couple, we just had a couple of changes it's that had to be much, made. Yeah, it's just pretty much exactly Same thing as we had before. There was just some clarification on things. Right. Okay. Like yes. the closing costs and all that, you know, and the survey costs, is that all? I mean, Mike that night said he would be taking a lot of that all on. Is that all explained in here? Or what? When does that get brought up? It's explained in the, the purchase agreement. You have closing costs regarding the transaction with the school. He's indicated that he's going to cover those as part of his you going for it. So but they're all highlighted in here then? That, yeah. Okay. Prior to the closing on both of them, you get a closing statement from the title company. They'll spell out specifically any allegations the city has or any allegations that Mr. Drummer has. The dollar amount that we, we got it from the school for a dollar then, right? Originally? Yeah, we got it from the school for a dollar plus closing costs. Closing costs, yep. Yeah. And in reality, this is going to be the best deal for the school that they've got for the three buildings because we saved them demolition now. Uh, the other one fell through and they're tearing down the Mapleton one already, right? Or going to yeah, be there. Yep. So in reality, our dollar offer was the best one I got. Well, less than less, less so like so all at auction. I don't see happening, but yeah. I, I think this is really the best one for the community that that looks pretty <laughs> Well, this school building is the best out of the three. So. Yep. Yep. It is. <clears throat> Was there any wording, or would when would that wording come that the city about a community center is is that 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 building one hundred percent his? So if the building is one hundred percent yeah. So if the the there was a pickleball team just per se wanted to, they would the city would have no business in it. They would go to him, right? Right, they would go to him unless the city, I mean, we can negotiate with him the same way we could any other property owner. Any, uh, a wedding anniversary, anything where anybody wanted to use that gym, that nothing comes back on the city once this is signed, that's all. It will be his uh, property. And all his. Okay. Baby, yep. Yeah. You plug it? No. 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 I guess the only comment I have is that the acceptance date is still January 23rd in there. Does I expect that, that that's just going to get, yeah. Okay. It's not uncommon, unfortunately, purchase agreements. Up there. 23rd or the 24th? Oh, I don't know. No, it's inside of the oh, document okay. itself. So. No. All right. I think it says 24, but maybe... It's in the... It doesn't matter. We're going to be what? Uh, and all I just month and a half. It's in the document. I just thought I'd ask. Yep. The date that everybody will go by is the date your signature is. So you have that date next. Find it now again. Oh, and I raised it right there. January 31st. There it is. Acceptance date deadline. Okay. And yeah, and I brought this question up before when we were talking. Now for this 14 days, we own this basically, right? Once there's agreement with the well, you'll own it at the closing. Yeah. You're you're no, committed to you're committed to purchase it for the next 14 days. So if you chose not to go through with the closing. Theoretically, the school district could try to sue you to compel you to take over the property. The question I had when we did this is: Is it insured? It's not. This is this is same word. This the, we don't own our oh, right. oh, okay. This is just an agreement that we're going to purchase, uh, and the actual sale will happen at the closing. And from what Drummond was Drummer was saying, he should have them both scheduled back to back. Well, we'll close on our purchase, and then he'll close immediately after. Yeah, I remember him saying. Um, him selling or 
reselling him buying. So in other words, the school still has the, the school district still has this insured. Yes, it's, it's insured. All right. Just so it isn't out there and something happens. Mr. Drummer will help be the owner of it. All right. Pardon? It's an even city buys it for a buck. He buys it back from the city for a buck. The city doesn't get direct to get profits from it immediately. So or the city will make their money. So we're not looking at TIF or anything, or we're financing it through taxes. So once he's developed the property and increased the value of the property, you know, he'll we're, be, we're, yeah, he'll be paying taxes. He'll pay the um, the um, closing costs for us too. I believe so. It's been a couple of weeks since I actually oh, took okay. a look at it. So well, that's the only way I can I, see that we fall behind. No, I, I don't think the city's going to fall behind even to say the paper. Yeah, I know. The closing costs are less than 4000 and you're taking something that's not on the tax rolls at all. And right now, I'm putting all the tax rolls for yeah. a significantly higher value. All right. But from what he, his predictions of the cost of the project that he was stating was what, thirty to 60000 in property <laughs> tax a year. So, yeah. With that all being said, and everybody looked or Tom looked it over, so I'm going to make a motion to accept this purchase agreement. I'll make a motion to accept it. Someone second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Um, moving on. RFP City Attorney John Brody. Oh, it, it came up. Many conversations to see if we want to look at getting a new attorney. So I, uh, and they sent me some exam examples for qualification and um, um, proposals for a city attorney. I basically did a copy and paste into the one that I, there was, I had four and I was first going to bring uh, Adam I just didn't pick one and do it myself um, so this would be just to put out a re request to see if anybody's interested and if they are they have to request or submit um, what their hourly rate would uh, any other specific details um, um, the only thing we have really would have to do is kind of pick a date we want to submit it and how long we want it out there. And then we would probably have to have a special meeting to review any proposals that we got. To look and then just ready to go with any of them or continue on with Kennedy. Further discussion? I know Chris explained that there is no contracts were completely free to do so yeah. and so that's i think we should got nothing on no reason to think this status i think it's something we should be kind of like looking at garbage companies uh, kind of like looking at garbage companies you know once every 10 20 years you should probably look out you know and you would take and put this out here and where it's highlighted a date we just have Three like days or six forty-five days or whatever. Yeah, I and that's I was kind of looking at the calendar. I don't know if it's already mid-March or less than or basically four weeks to the next meeting. So I don't know if we'd want to go to like maybe mid-April and then a special meeting maybe later April or I don't know. Give people time. I I don't know. Can we wait till after the whole school thing is totally done? That probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Or we do in there. We can table it. Got it. It's, not, it's something, nothing that's going to happen immediately anyway. I mean, it's just going to take two, three months. And in, depending on what we get, I have no idea what other firms in the area even cover municipal government. There may not be that many. I'm assuming there probably aren't. There's one or two. If that's you, Simon, but yeah. 
Where would it be posted? So um, I was trying to find that again, and I don't know if I deleted it. I'll have to reach out. Um, I reached out to COG first, and I got these, I think, from um, COG, whatever COG stands, Council Governments. Um, and she said in one of them um, that there's a website um, or they will post it on their website. And I guess that's something that people look at regularly. That's the only other thing I I probably need a little more information on is if do we post something in the free press, which may not be a bad idea, um, but I don't know. That would be probably kind of spindy. I don't know. If, I know the free probably press. Probably some legal websites you could put it on that all lawyers look at. Yeah, yeah. I just think why wait on the process? Just get it started. That's going to take time too. True. Get applications in, get people interested, get people looking. We just need a new one. Yeah, well, and, and I'm not saying that you know through this that we'll get a new one either. You know, we may we not we may not get any bites at all. You know, or but gives us the option. So, but if you want to wait till what are you talking about when this? the sale of the school finishes? I guess that's my suggestion. Let's just wait till after that's done. But if we put it out there and give it a 30, that's... 45 day to reply, that would be well past the school closing. Should be, hopefully. Should be, hopefully. We could put it out, today's the 13th, to like April 28th. That's basically a good month and a half. And by hopefully the end of April, um, the I school agree. will be done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to make that motion for him then? Okay. Uh, motion to approve to send out a uh, request for qualifications and proposals for a new city attorney. With uh, a submit date of April 28th. All right. John made a motion. Someone to second? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Compared. So, Ash, I'll stop by tomorrow because I don't know if it was from what I sent. There was an overlap on the okay. printout. And just make sure you have a clear copy and get it worked out. Okay. Anything else, John? Nope. That was it on that. All right. I had unfinished business. We put chickens in the city of Good Thunder. Talk about them. You were in here. I brought up last month, you know, if we allowed chickens where the manure would go, one thing I said, uh, there's not many gardens in town. So would it end up in the garbage? And is that allowable? So but we have a compost site it could go to, right? Mm, I wouldn't say that without checking into that. So the problem being is manure is a tough thing to be rid of unless you've got property. You know. <laughs> so the point being is if you allow chickens, you know people aren't going to find that garbage can is right here. Goes in there. It's gone. Tuesday afternoon, it's gone. So, and again, it's not supposed to go down to the landfill. Or, I mean, to the waste processing plate, right? Either, That's where it goes, right? Either way. Yeah. yeah. So, again, we're back here to the chickens. Um, good points, bad points. We talked about it last month. Do you have anything to add this time, Tom? The price of eggs are coming down, too. So, <laughs> I'm I'm against it myself because... There's very few people. Well, I, I think when in the information that I think you collected, Ashley, for us to look at, there's communities that have a number of uh, requirements. And I think, it, I, I don't remember, it was Minnesota Lake, I want to say, no one's ever done it. Because no, they don't. After they really look at it, there's a, all the requirements are kind of hard to meet. Excuse me, you know. And um, other there's a couple other communities that there's like one or two that have done it or something like that. But I myself am against it because I just don't think it would be any way to um, enforce whatever ordinance we want to dream of. Yes. 
Well, the thing of it is on damp days, and the air is heavy, and the guy's got his chicken pen right there along the guy's, the other guy's neighbor's garage, you know, and that odor that we, we smell now out here from the compost thing could be 25 feet from that guy's back door. Or closer, depends or on closer. where the property line is. <laughs> so, you know, one, one of the requirements that I think they all, that I read anyway, is that you have to get a signed document from your neighbor that says it's okay. That Minnesota Lake has that for sure. And I think there was another one. Yeah. There? One thing people don't realize, I've raised poultry for 25 years. After they molt twice, you don't get eggs anymore. Now you got a pet chicken. <laughs> what are you going to do with them after two seasons after they molt twice and they're not laying eggs anymore? Now you got half a dozen pet chickens to deal with. And I can eat them. Can't slaughter them in town. Um, that's you wouldn't want to eat a laying hen anyway. Have you ever had other towns, Chris, that have dealt with this? How are they handling it? Like Crystal just recently allowed chickens to come into town. Uh, the new doctor that was coming into town wanted to raise chickens and raised it. Um, they put the restrictions in. You, know, you contact neighbors. Uh, there's waste restrictions in there. Uh, the argument the doctor made is that, you know, I understand your waste arguments, but that's really no different than cats or dogs. Yep, and a lot of cat stuff and dog stuff. I mean, that trash can at the park gets a lot of dog oh. waste, a lot. Everybody walks by and it goes in there right where the picnic tables are. Boy, that's pleasant. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Irrespective, that's my opinion. I, I, I'm not in favor of it. Is it even necessary to pursue it unless someone specifically comes here and says, "I would like chickens. What do I need to do?" Well, I think we were specifically asking and taking the time and that important that they're up here. Maybe it's not even worth discussing. We were asked, though, somebody wanted to know if we would allow chickens. Mark, Mark down by the daycare wanted a chicken, but I think I know all the daycare guidelines, and he wouldn't be able to have chickens there, or you wouldn't have a daycare there. I I talked to Mark, too, and he said, well, I guess I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> I was like, that wouldn't be allowed anyways. Well, and uh, by the... Uh, um... The examples of the other cities, there was a 25-foot setback from the house, and his yard doesn't support that at all because he's got a very, very narrow backyard. But um, I, I go back and forth on it, but I do see where it could pose more problems than anything else myself. Yep. Um, like I say, the biggest thing is enforcing it. And that that's and the that's other part of the enforcement. It's going to be a big problem. So we need to have a motion to say that we, at this time, are not allowing chickens in the city limits you don't currently allow chickens in the city limits you need a motion to allow it you don't need a motion to all right it's, 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 it's both. so we're good yeah all right yeah. anybody else with comments on the chickens they had ducks that include the ducks that were here too we got Did ducks the ducks moved out of town so their ducks are a non-issue they're out of town all right that would include duck Alrighty, new business. Purchase agreement with Mike Drummer sign. That'll be later, right? And a closing date that'll have to be decided when we get all the paperwork back, right? And you can we need to make a motion to sign that purchase agreement tonight. No, okay. Okay. Um anybody else with new business? I don't know if what what I got is new or not, but I mean I know a lot of this we talked about about a generator down the ball uh, down at the lagoon. Should we look into that again and get the prices? Yep, I believe so. We don't have to go down there in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did you get prices? No, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna. I thought that was brought up to get them. We have, and I just make sure we're all in favor of it. Yeah. I was at the convention last week. There was a generator guy there, and I gave him our number. If you need another bit other than North Star, yeah, uh, it was a cat. He sold cat generators and for wastewater, and that's what they specialize in. Anyway, I gave him your number, not your number, but no, <laughs> her number. Do you happen to know? Does a lot of towns with a lagoon like us do they have a standby generator at their facility? Yes, oh, I'm sure they do. Okay. Emerton's got one. It's funny that isn't a mandate by the state. Yeah. 
Robert. Yeah, it is. City shop. Remember, I read that out of 12 minutes. It said the city shop and the lagoon they wanted generators for so he could get out. Oh, he got a cord. Tom knows that. <laughs> Needed help lifting the door. Yeah. You can get out of the city shop. Help get the door up there. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think proceed ahead, get some bids and uh, get that. Because it isn't only the winter time. You could have a heck of a storm in the summer and knock the power out for oh, yeah. two days, too. So. Do you want our city guy to do this or you want Ron to do it? I'm just. Ron, why don't you uh, do it? Okay. But let's be sure that it's fully automatic, you know. So oh, yeah. it'll right. do the testing it'll, and everything. It'll have yeah. to be sized for enough KVA to run all four pumps at the same time. Yeah. yeah. We're talking a big generator. Yeah. It'd be a good size one. Well, it'd be like this one sitting over here. It'd be than that. Be probably the pump pump. Is there two five horse down there and no, two threes okay. or no, two, <laughs> two fives and two one by the fire station too? <laughs> two fifteens, I think, isn't there? Those two big ones pump six hundred gallons a minute. Oh, they're 15 parts a piece? Exactly, but I think they're... Oh, that'll take a big one. Yeah. And I don't know, does anybody know if the natural gas goes that way out of town? I don't believe we that. that out in tank. And I guess contact the gas company, Ron, first, see if they'd ever want to run a line from town out there. Yeah. Because then you don't have to deal with the tank. It's there, nice. you know. We'd have to get permission though from the MPCA to excavate a line in our <laughs> site, but yeah. From the, the county road on the south side, you run along the bank, you'd have you're to get up there. Yeah, because you're on you're on the dike basically there. But wouldn't you stay on the west side, Tom, down in the lower part, and then just go up wherever your generator is, which you're is still probably in the dike. You're still in the, you're still in the pond. Okay. You know, it's kind of careful. All right. We'll check that out. Well, they'll, yep. they'll bring a tank out. When you do it, your contractor will explore all right. that before he does yep. the bid. Whoever's going to do it will do all that. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, they get bids for turning down the house we own. We do need bids for that. We don't have them yet, do we? No. Yeah. You say you want to get bids? I've got yeah. You know, if that's okay, to tear down the house over here where we're thinking about putting a well, we'd need a motion on that. It's, it's just a vacant site right now, right? Doing nothing, right? You guys already got bids, so well, didn't you? Pardon? Four reason DMI. You already went and got bids, didn't you? Yeah, have you got one? I didn't. I just know they were out here, and you said one time I think it was DMI or Boning said. Thirteen thousand or thirty thousand or something like that. That was just off the cuff. So I mean, this would be, have to be written. And, It'd have to be written. Yeah. Right? Just uh, and they wanted to go through the houses, see how much asbestos is there. So I mean, just I would guess most of them do. I know Boning does. So we should. I'm just letting you know that that's what I'm doing. Or put an RFP out for it then. We just have to get a hold of a couple contractors, right, and get bids right. from them. Right. You need to get a couple of contractors and get bids for them. It probably isn't going to be over fifteen thousand dollars. I'm just guessing. Twenty. Yeah, assuming there's no asbestos, I think you're probably right. Yeah. So somebody want to make a motion then to allow Ron to search out bids for the demo of the house? So moved. Someone second. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Can I vote on this? I'll leave that up to you. Pardon? I, I, that's up to you whether you want to vote on it or not. Well, then I will abstain. Yeah. So, motion is passed with four ayes and one abstain abstention. <clears throat> Has anybody reached out? Pardon? Has anybody reached out to somebody to maybe move it off there? So we tried, well, tried that. Yeah. We did that last year. Never got any bites. So. <laughs> Okay, we're down to Jason. You have a proposal from the Red Iron. Anybody have an objection to having a charge account? House account, like the county's approach is doing the same thing down there. So instead of running it on a credit card, you could just have a house account where you charge it, you know, until once a month. Well, how does that work after hours? Then you just use a card like normal during business hours. Or what gasoline we're talking about? Yeah, or gas and diesel. Because the charges are quite, you know, they sometimes get a little outrageous. And like Bob steps down, and Bob's the only one that puts five gallons in the in the mower. 
it kind of is a backwards deal. It eats up the profit. Well, so instead of putting it on the credit card, making the credit card more money, just been doing a charge and pay the bill, send the bill. Yeah. It's like any other thing that comes to the city and they pay the bill. Yep. That's how we do Freiburg, the shell station. Yeah. Just a host account. Yeah. You see a problem with that, Chris? No. Is there a way to have your own personal cards down there? Like you guys make them up? So it's. You can, but it gets into more thousands of dollars, though. More like readers? Yes. Oh. For the three people that would use it. Well, I just. Our fire trucks, obviously, we got nine of them. We got nine all right now, card for each one. Yeah, and see, last last uh, month, the uh, the bills were uh, for WEX, which is used by the fire department and the city, uh, was eleven hundred twenty eight dollars. And you know, I don't know how many of them were fire truck. Well, yeah, it does break it down here. It was uh, mainly it was the city because of all the snow plowing, tractor use, and everything else. Well, we get going, there'll be a few more hours, you know. So, for the most part, I think everybody's going to be there during the day. So, who would, what we don't get during the day, not a big deal. It's just so who would be the, the user then? Race primarily, I'm assuming, right? Because it'd be for the tractor, the, the equipment that the city has. That's what we're talking about, right? It'll be maintenance in the fire department. In the fire department. The fire department. Okay. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that. So are we thinking keep the wax cards then, and then when you're closed, yeah, you keep them. Then they would just use yeah. the wax cards and so do it that way. My supplier has his own card troll. He has his own card, like you were asking, and he carries he carries everybody for thirty days because he knows too that the card charges and all that add up, take a lot of your money. So. With that, then, would we want to have a motion for to do that? Um, you would have to develop some way that we would all know then what truck it always went in. You know, like we have to sign a truck. Like we number. have a program where you sign the receipt. So you would get a copy. So we have many companies that we have their card or whatever. We don't have charge accounts, but we have their card and they come in and they print their name and they put their van number and then they get the receipt and then somebody from the company comes and picks it up monthly Yeah. and then they pay the bill. So same kind of process. They would have to come in and put their name, first and last name, and then truck number. Truck number, or, some identifying. Yes. It goes on yes. their health account and then two receipts get printed. One gets signed and we keep the other one goes with say him. Yep. And then you bill it out. And I've also got a log book to also write it down and a person can sign it just to have a double check. So nobody comes back and says, well, I didn't do that. Well, that's, um, you know, it just protects everybody. If there's a list of no, of trucks and you can't charge to anything except what's on the list and, and or whatever. And you have authorized yeah. signers. Yeah. So you'd have a sheet there saying these trucks, these signers. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion that we do that. Someone to second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, I'll be abstain again. Uh, motion passed by four ayes, one abstention. <laughs> All right. Well, the things yet. They're the CBD, they're not CBD, but the gummy thing is legal now. Nobody has a problem with it. Since it's legal, nobody could sell that stuff. That he has no ordinances on that type of thing. The city currently does not have an ordinance to regulate okay. CBD. It's likely to get changed here in the next six weeks with the new legislation. Because um, I know that's where the big controversy between the legalizing marijuana right now is and how that's going to apply to the previous CBD laws. But you have no regulation regarding that. Could you talk a little longer, please? I'll try. Sorry. Thank you. So would it change in six weeks? Well, it's, it, the legislature is going to make changes to law in this session. As to what that is, that's speculation at this point. But you don't have any regulation on your books to regulate CBD at this point. So if they're doing it legal through the state, they, they would be able to sell those products. And it's a legal substance, right? 
it's illegal substance depending on the THC quantity. Okay. I mean, if they meet all the restrictions and all the requirements, there's nothing in the city code that prevents a business from selling it. Didn't you have a paper here a few months ago, something about C? Chris uh, drafted. Oh, I sent a letter to you, and I yeah. sent you guys some of the other cities were taking a look at that and regulating it. You know, North Mankato's regulated it. Uh, like Crystal chose not to, what C could put a moratorium in place. Uh, at that time, the city chose to take no action. How did North Mankato regulate it? Uh, it basically requires them to ask for a license with the city if they're going to sell CBD in the city. And then we have some restrictions regarding where it can be sold. And um, it's, we're, we're, it's treated more like alcohol than it would be, let's say, tobacco. So when this group of people get together to do all this research and things on our codes and all that, would that be one of them that they might have to research going if, forward? If directed by council. Yeah, because we don't have one to look at now. Okay. Right. The chances are that the state's going to usurp anything the city can do. So it'll be state regulation, not city regulation, not CBD and THC. So almost all the legislation right now takes it out of the hands of the cities. Okay. So all we'd have to stipulate that as long as they meet all state regulations. They can I, I don't think you're going to have any ability to, you know, to regulate it in any way, shape, or form. You don't have to stipulate, not stipulate that it'll be done through the state. All right. Then the street lights we've been talking about for several years, adding that one on pole and that alley down here. Yeah, you know, we talked about adding some street lights up there on Chapel Street and a couple of other areas. I think, uh, was it Jake that went around one night or whatever? But anyway, we were going to add like six, eight street lights and we that fell through i think it even goes back to Brian. maybe it does yeah so would some of us that are on streets or whatever go around and see the dark areas like we got this extra one in the middle here that really helps city hall uh chapel street is very dark up there on that end so i mean would all of us or whatever drive around there's and not I one on the corner up there is it yeah but halfway down the block it's very dark. Oh, okay Okay. You know, yep. Would we just take an ob yeah. observation and see and come to a conclusion where maybe it'd be better to have more street lights? Sure. Someday when we get more traffic up here, you know, this alley corner down here is dark, really dark. Like no light there until five or three. You know, that was the one we talked about. And then the driveway of the station itself, we talked about having one there to light up that intersection. Because, you know, the new lights, they don't spread light at all. You just kind of shoot it down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We'll take it. No, no reason why not. Look around and come report back, everybody. All right. Anything else? Grant? Is there a chance to get a street sign on Oak Street there and Main Street? People that come to visit me end up driving around looking for the sign that says, oh. Be nice to have one there. There's not one on. I don't, I don't think. Okay. So. Is it on the old post office side or not? No. Used no. to be. Did it, it used to be, didn't it? There was one there. Yeah, because I think when we did that, what was we had to tear something up there. I bet you that left. Yeah, got, when they did the the hydrant. There you go. Yeah. They yeah. never got replaced. The old hydrant used to shoot right on that pole. They kind of spread it out nice. <laughs> Would we you look into it? it on Grant's side? of the street or back on the north side of the street? Well, something that's visible. I mean, it's, you wouldn't want it right on the corner of the, on your corner there, I don't think. You got light pole there and everything, so that blocks it. <laughs> uh, let's just follow whatever planning are. Well, I understand, yeah. Planes about it. So. I want the bell tower corner. I think Brian's right. It was on that corner. Right next to the hydrant. You, when, you, when you did it, it shot right at you, hit the pole. I remember it being there, too. Okay. Well, I, we'll probably put it on the north side of the street right there so they can find it. Grant? Do they review all, all right. of the street signs? Being somebody that hasn't been here forever, I don't know where half the streets are because <laughs> a lot of them aren't posted or they're spelt wrong. I, I, Holiday I can... North and South has got two different spellings, depending on which sign you look at. Really? I've never heard that. I'm going to try to find my where I'm living now. 
I, I can make a, a comment on this. Um, I know the guy that does Lake Crystal, uh, Dean Tibbetts, they had to replace all of their street signs because there's some new ordinance yeah. from the state that they all have to be that 3 and reflective. Um, we did sign. that, but it's been many, many years ago. How long ago did that go back? That's 15, 20 years ago, I think we went to that reflective signing. And I know some of them are faded out again, so I guess it's something we're going to have to look at. And we need a lot of signs, stop signs and everything. And they're all, they're really ratty. Some of them you yeah. can't see. So, no. I, I mean, mentioned a race too, the no truck sign on Sherman here, Sherman and Ewing. It's all faded out. And I think it was however long ago. You can see the red sign, but no, no trucks and the amount of semis coming down that road lately. Well, or let's get a bid on replacing all the signs in town. Yep. That's a fairly expensive project. Yes, it is. Or will be. Yeah. Yep. Expensive too. So I don't know who does that, but thanks for bringing it to our attention and we'll work on it because we have some money and let's let race updated find out, find somebody that can do that. Speaking of stop signs, are they ever going to do anything with the one by our place? Because people fly to it all the time. I mean, I know we're supposed to call the sheriff, but I'm not going to run to the sheriff every time somebody goes flying through there. Is that one that is, is it supposed to be there? We we did that to try to slow down the, the the traffic because without it being blacktop now, you get that black dust. So Ron got it put up, it got stolen within 24 hours. Before we even knew they were there. And they were been up now, but yes, people, they don't even look at them. Mm -hmm. Sorry, where's where's this one at? Holiday down here, South. Okay. Holiday in Chapel Street. Oh, okay. I love so, I mean, do we need to put the flashing beacons on them? Maybe with that? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> there might be windows up there. No. <laughs> I I don't know how to answer that one because you know people are in old habit. They'd... Something to put stop sign ahead or something. I know in other areas where not in town here, but when they put up a new stop sign, they'll say stop sign ahead. Where I'm from, they did a big thing because they moved the stop signs. How about if we get that street blacktop in the next year or two and we put a bump there? I don't care. I don't turn it after. You know, <laughs> that might be some way of getting their attention <laughs> to stop. Potholes on that road, you can't come work two miles an hour anyway. I mean, I'm in my house. I can stand up and ask them if they're black. I'll sit in my bay window and watch. And I can tell you which ones will stop because they're looking to see if I'm looking at them. <laughs> I mean, I don't do anything. I'm just standing there going, let's see if this guy stops. And they don't. Well, maybe get a license number and just hand it to the sheriff. And... I don't know. It's just, I have better things to do. But I was just wondering, I mean, because sometimes people stop. Sometimes they go flying by there, you know. Mm. I don't some of this one hour well, been there. And that's another thing is that cops, I mean, when they first put him up there, the cop was sitting at that, I call it an alley, I don't know what that street is, Wait. south of us, between us and um, those other people. I don't know what their names are. Is that Chapel? Yep. Yeah, the cop was sitting there and nailed a dirt bike. And that's the only time I've ever seen a cop do anything out there. He was probably looking for the dirt bike more than anything. Oh, I'm sure. Well, you <laughs> too. Put it this way, is it routinely people that live on that street? I don't or... think lives on the street. Oh, okay. I mean, I can. Well, how about the same vehicle? Oh, yeah. Same vehicle day after day? Yeah. yeah. Weekends too? I don't think we can that early in the weekend. All right. I, I, I don't know how we can how we can fix it. You know, maybe we'd have the sheriff stop there. Let's just give a note to the sheriff. Yep. Yeah. And what time of the day does this happen? Oh, gosh. It's usually, well, some of the kids are still walking to school then. So it's around anywhere between six and seven. And I see cars flying through there. And I also know that, I mean, because the kids are coming on that one street in front of our place and then going down to chapel, I think, where the school is. Okay. And there's cars that are flying through there. Well, have Ashney get a hold of the sheriff, tell them what's going on right there, and see if they can't curtail some of that. I'm going to my street. <laughs> okay. The gravel or the car? The gravel. They don't stop at that gravel stop sign. So. My God, that guy goes flying in there. If there's a kid on the street, he'll kill him. I've never seen anybody come into town like that guy does. All right. Okay. Um, Ashley, you want to put that tank for sale again that, that's up the shop? Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't put a picture in the paper. Just put tank and a 500-gallon tank and okay. pump. How about oh, best offer? 
to get rid of it. Could do that, yeah. Because okay. it isn't very good looking. And, Does, and it has the pump with it? Yeah, pumps with it, yep. Pump, pump is in the shed, I think. Yep. And that'll be the time farmers might be looking. Okay. All right, anything else on your new business? Now we can move on to miscellaneous. Um, audit was done March 2nd. Yep. And they'll probably be at the April meeting. Yep. All right. And John, your name is next for an annual review form. Yeah. So that was another thing I looked into. Um, they only had one. It, I'm not overly impressed with that. I wanted to see if maybe um, the league or somebody else has one, but I think it'd be a good idea for all involved that we start doing an annual, written annual review for Ashney and for race. Um, but what they provided, it's, it's, I'm not a big comment or a big fan of it, of this one. I'm, I'm hoping we can find something maybe that we can modify a little bit more because this is basically, I don't know, I don't even know how to say it. This is way too wordy to, uh, try to sift through and sift through. Um, but I think it, um, for all involved, I think it would be good that we started to do an annual review. Then we have basis for um, pay raises um, and then anything else at the end of the year or whenever we decide to implement them. So, but I'm going to try to find, see if I can get a hold of something better than this one. Um, contact, contact other cities, smaller cities. And yeah, I didn't do that. I did COG and I, I thought they would have something, but it's, this one's all right, but I I personally don't like it. But um, yeah, I could do that too. So. And you're right. We need to have annual reviews. Hasn't been done forever. So you're very right. Yeah. All right. With that, anything else? Okay. Um, oh, I got a question, I guess. If somebody needs information, a document or whatever, what is the actual process what do we have to do if i want to let's say i want to look at a check a canceled check what do i have to do as a citizen or a council person either one put it in writing okay. put it in writing and put it in writing submit it and then there's usually a and they roughly turn get that information i think that's what we based it on first do you have a, a file of those already so nobody's nobody's put anything um, in writing. No, when somebody's requested information, I've sent them a letter saying they need to put it in writing, and they've never followed up with the request in writing. So we have a policy that we have. It's not a policy. I mean, uh, you're required to follow chapter fifty of data practices act. So if somebody makes a request, you're supposed to put it in writing. It goes to your data practices officer, which I believe in this case is uh, Ashney. Yeah. So I don't know if you actually designated somebody. Okay. Um, and then depending on what the information is, you go back and if there's going to be a lot of documents, you can tell the individual what we think the copying costs are going to be or, or the cost to obtain it. If there's not much, you know, you can provide that information to them. Sure. Okay. But, you know, you have to take a look at what information they have, and then it has to be accessed as to whether it's public, private, or confidential. So private would be able to go to the individual who's making the request if it's on themselves. Public can go to anybody, confidential can't be disclosed at all. Right. Right. So is there an actual form for that or is it just something you would just write out that says I want to look at whatever? Pretty much. Um, that's kind of what I said. They just write out XYZ. I think we I'm I think I sent you a form that we kind of drafted, but it wasn't anything elaborate. It was just your name, information that you were requesting. Okay. So and what did you what did you quote? I'm sorry. It's chapter 13. Chapter 13. So just for Peace of mind in the last six months, nobody has come into that office and asked for any, any, any documents, any billing, anything from the city of Good Turner. No. Interesting. Then why did I receive a big long letter from you about all the stuff I had to submit to you get asked, copies of something? You asked for it in an open meeting and Kennedy told me to send you a letter. It was more than a letter. And then um, the only person who's came in this office and requested information 
was the sheriffs. That's the only people who have came in here with written documentation of what they want. Other than that, no one else has came in here with written documentation for what they want. Okay, I was just curious. Am I able to request stuff at an open meeting here? If you're doing a data practices request, it needs to be in writing by statute. Pardon? If you're doing a data practices request, it needs to be in writing. So you would do that not in an open meeting. You would do it separately. Okay, but if people are uncomfortable coming to this city hall because of her, which I hear all the time. The request we can have, be We can't ask them. We have to right. write it down. Because if you're bringing something up at the council meeting, the council technically can't act on it at that meeting. So, and if you're making a request for data, the statute indicates that it needs to be in writing and it goes to the data practices officer. But have they said it has to be in writing? Have it's they? never came up until she started saying that. It has always been that if you request something, the council has said, right. yes, give it to them. That may be, the statute's clear. So the legislature says it has to be in writing. Okay, I'd like to see a copy of that at some point. This chapter 13 of the Minnesota statute. Okay. So it's right there. All right. Well, with that being said, then, if that's it, somebody make a motion to adjourn. Uh, just to let you know, this council will be remaining here. We have to go into a closed session with Chris Kennedy about some litigation. So that's what will be happening. So with this point, somebody make a motion to adjourn. So move. Someone a second. All in favor, say aye. Okay. Aye. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Silly alligator. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.